here, but then we'll get right back to it. Hello, we are live. This is Unraveled Hearts Bible Study. So glad that you came upon this video. It is not by accident. I promise you, if you plug in this next hour, if you run and get your Bible, you will learn something. I guarantee it, okay? We are all over the RGB and we ask you that, you know, we invite you to always come to the table, but this is the second best thing for you to kind of just get away, you know, kick the cat out, get yourself in a closet if the kids are running around and get with the bot, you know, get in the word of God and you will learn something. Also, if you're a business owner, if you, uh, you know, have a church, if you're part of a church body, if you have a, a home, whatever it is, we will go and invade your space. If you so want, um, you can host us. All you got to do is what? Make us a good meal, <laughs> you know, have a space for us so that we'll go and women will go and invade your space. We will proclaim the word of God from your location. So, um, you know, message me, let me know, and definitely I would love to come and, and definitely uh, be at your location with a bunch of ladies ready to study the Word of God. Okay, um, also we've got several things going on. We've got our spring uh, getaway coming up in April. You gotta get on board for that because the early bird expires a, uh, February 29th. So you want to pay up before February 29th to get you on board for this. $50 holds your spot. You get on there as quickly as possible. This is getting away with us and totally saturating yourself with the Word of God and with women that are seeking the Lord. Uh, this is getting out of your comfort zone. So you gotta go check it out. It's on our Unraveled Hearts public page and, um, and check out all the details there. Also, this Saturday, you don't want to miss, we have a leadership class, and that's at the Cowboy Church. They were so kind to host us, and we're going to be there from 11 to 1 this Saturday. And all the details, again, you can scroll down on this page and find them. You can go to the events and find them. Um, but yes, it's, it's called the Unbecoming Woman, okay? And in order to find out what that is, yeah, you're going to have to show up and take the class. But it's a, a fantastic way for you to walk deeper and go higher in God. So we're going to jump right into our study. We're going to start with Proverbs. Proverbs is our appetizer. So let's go there. And yeah, yeah so we'll, we'll pray in a minute. Let me get to Proverbs chapter 11, verse <clears throat> 11. So we're going to start there. I want... Um, yeah, Michelle, can you read, you have like an apologetic or new, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and, and read that, please. <clears throat> 11 what? So chapter 11, verse 11. Okay. A city is built up by the blessing of the upright, but it is torn down by the mouth of the wicked. Okay. Can we get another translation in there? Eva, can you read 11, 11? I have it in Spanish. That's okay. 11 11? Yes. Okay. 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 And Joanna, can you get her that other Bible? So yes. if she reads again, she can just read in English. Thanks. Okay. So we're gonna go through this and we're gonna go through this is our appetizer, then we're gonna go through our meat and potatoes, but we're gonna go ahead and pray. Um, so let's let's pray. Spirit of God, we need you right now. Presence of God, we need you to come right now. We wanna learn from that thick, thick cloud that is your presence. Father God, we don't wanna do anything but operate from your presence. Holy Spirit, we need you to lead us into all truth. Holy Spirit, highlight things in our heart, in our minds that need to be changed, that need to be transformed. <clears throat> God, help us to focus. Help us to be undistracted women just running after you, God, tonight. I pray that you will show us something, that you will reveal things to us, Father God. I thank you, God. I thank you for this time. I give you honor, Father God, for this moment. We give this time to you. 
as a sacrifice, as an offering. God, you have our attention. Anything that is tugging at our minds and our hearts from the outside, God, make them stop in Jesus' name. Help us, Father God, to focus just on you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so we've got two translations were, were read, and I'm going to read it in the Geneva, in the King James, and in the Living Translation, and we're going to unpack it, because the Proverbs <coughs> is rich. It is just great treasure, and it has so much, and I know it's only one verse, but there's treasure there. Okay, so we're going to read it with the Geneva Bible. And the Geneva and King James are just older uh, translations that give us a more authentic feel for the, the, what is this, he, the Hebrew language. Verse 11, by the blessing, this is the Geneva, by the blessing of the righteous, the city is exalted, but it is the subverted, but it, but it is subverted by the mouth of the wicked. Okay. Exalted. What does exalted mean? It should be an easy one. Lift up. Yeah. Lift up. Elevated, made superior. Okay? That's what we should be doing for one another. If someone asks me about you, I always, oh, she's wonderful. She's fantastic. Oh, you know, she's gifted in this. You can't wait for you to meet her. That's what we need to do for one another whenever we speak um, about each other. So it says, by the blessing of the righteous, the city is exalted. Okay, so by those that are righteous, their blessing exalts that city. Okay, but in the subverted, <clears throat> but it, it is subverted. Okay, that's an older word. What does that mean? It means to overthrow, to overturn, to bring down, to tear down. Okay, to topple, to corrupt, to poison by the mouth of the wicked. Okay, all right, so blessings. From the righteous, exalt that city. Mouth from the wicked, subvert that city with the overthrow, topple, bring down, okay? Then the King James reads the same, okay? So I'm not going to uh, get into that one, but the Living Bible, okay, it makes it layman's terms, very common, upright citizens, which, uh, you know, because we're using righteous, and we know now that the definition of righteous and wicked, righteous is someone walking with God, wicked is someone not walking with the Lord. But if I say to you, oh, you know, she's an upright citizen, that could mean, you know, a lot of things. You know, she's nice, she's good, but I, that does not necessarily mean that she knows the Lord. So it really waters down right there in the New Living Translation. But it says this, the upright citizens are good for a city, and make it prosper but the talk of the wicked tears it apart okay so overall similar and gets the message across let's talk about this what great treasure do you get out of this verse okay i want you to think are you able to recognize people who are blessings in your life mm -hmm. are you able to recognize it in your home, in your school, in your work, in your church, in your organizations, and see that what they bring to the table elevates the environment. Can you see that in certain people? Can you give me some examples? In your work, in your organization, in, in your family life. If you can see it, now tell me. Give me an example. Well, I, like I see blessings, you know, with uh, my church family, mm -hmm. you know, um, encouragement. So that's a blessing to me when they encourage me to, you know, study more or, you know, mm -hmm. do things like that. Okay. You know the <laughs> difference when someone's a blessing, right? So how can you how can you tell? If you say you know, then then let give me an example of someone in your life that's a blessing, a concrete example. You don't have to use their name. 
Like I have a coworker mm -hmm. at, at, at work, and you know we're always you know talking about you know sometimes things that we're going through, and then we're always lift up lifting up the name of, of the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through through the experience, and like because you know mm -hmm. like no we have gone through this or that, but you know God has been faithful and He has gone, you know He's gonna help us get through it. Mm -hmm. So to me that's a blessing to have someone yeah. to, to talk to and and uh, lift up my spirit when. My spirit is down, or you know, or the yeah. same, I'll be the same for her. So, to me, that's a big blessing. Yes, that I'm actually have that. That you have, you could have someone that's very yeah. negative that as soon as you walk in the room, they suck the joy and life out of you. Yeah. So, that's yeah. a she's a blessing. Me. Well, she's yeah. a blessing, yeah. Uh, cause, you know, like I said, we're always, uh, she's a Christian person, uh -huh. so she's, yeah. you know, we're always uh, encouraging each other, but yeah, we do yeah. have the negative. Right. too where they make you feel like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so all you gotta do is pray for them <clears throat> so so you understand like the the people who are blessing and so likewise you mentioned likewise you can see clearly those who are not right people who are not walking with god <clears throat> can tear can tear apart a home a work environment a church environment an organization a business with their mouth mm -hmm. with their mouth that's what the verse says okay the most important question is can you yourself can you yourself see yourself in these roles whether a blessing or <clears throat> Maybe in the past, know what it is to be the person that tears it all down with your mouth. Okay. Can you? And these are. This is important to reflect upon. Okay, because I I don't know you. I don't know what you're like behind closed doors. You know, I. We want to. You're here obviously because you you're seeking more of the Lord, right? So. Your desire is to be a blessing. That is moments like this, because a lot of times we're rush, 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 that you realize, oh shoot, sometimes I'm not a blessing, you know? And sometimes my tendency is for this. You know, sometimes my tendency, you, you've got to notice those things about yourself. Do I say I'm a righteous person? Do people know me as a righteous person? But then, do I act in the way of the wicked that with my mouth I tear these things down? I think sometimes, like as far as being a parent, mm -hmm. like <clears throat> that's where I fall short big time because mm -hmm. you were, I fall in not being a blessing because it's so easy to just react in flesh when, there's, when your child is doing wrong, mm -hmm. no matter the age, adult, teen, young, and you, you, <laughs> You're just so quick to focus on what they're doing wrong, and you lash out or you try to you correct them, but in the worldly correction, and mm -hmm. you should be doing this, you should be doing that, but ultimately, the correction should just be constant. You know, the love, the love, the guidance, the pointing to God, and and it's just you know we're we're just taught you know with such a worldly mentality to correct them in the way the world says that they need to be, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's in school or work or just in life. But I find <clears> myself <throat> making that, falling short on, in being a blessing to my children and that. But, I mean, I recognize it, so, yeah, you know, I catch myself, but yeah. it's, it's really tough. I completely agree. Um, and it's <clears throat> funny because my husband just um, put me in check <laughs> a few days ago because... I mean, like I tell you, like at work or just like here, you know, it's just like I feel like I try to be a big blessing. So even at work, mm -hmm. I feel like everybody's like, you know, because I do have a light in me mm -hmm. um, that I feel, you know, that mm -hmm. sometimes people just need to be heard or talked to. And just like mm -hmm. even at work, we talk about God, you know, and I don't even know if that's like, you know, but I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah. And people tend to tell me like you can tell that you just exude it, you know? That's awesome. And it's yeah. just amazing because that's what I want to be. But at the same time, my husband is like, whoa, 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 like, where is all this light sometimes <laughs> at home? 
Damn. When you lash out at me or at the kids, and you're saying you're this light, but you have to realize and recognize, yes, you can project what you want people to see. Yeah, but you have to make sure that if that's who you're gonna want to be, that that's what needs to come out. You need to be more caring, more forgiving. You know, just little yeah. things like that. Yeah. So it's like we kind of have to get ourselves in check and be like, you know, you're right. Like, it doesn't just matter what everybody else sees. And I do feel like I can have that light. But just like Michelle said, mm -hmm. sometimes it's almost yeah. like we're incapable of it. And I think that's where we have to work on trying to get that same light that we have. <laughs> just at all times. Yeah, Which yeah, is hard yeah. because we're human. Listening to God. Yeah, yeah. So the you know, oh, there's a lot there, but I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna pull that core because but but yes, yes, you're on the right track because it's good that we you know, um I ask the questions because the question helps to kind of, you know, Let's put our masks down and let's really get to the nitty gritty of who we are and how, you know, how God can do that surgery in our hearts. So, yes, what you are saying is what multiple women um, deal with and, and the same, same with the kids, right? So, I want to ask another question. Can you see the growth in your life when you compare it here to this proverb, Okay. Or can you see the need for growth? So you either see, man, I have come a long way. Because in the past, like, you know, I would tell you off in a dime, right? I, I know that I'm, you know, I've come a long way. Or do you see, like what you just saw, hey, I, I recognize that I am a blessing, but I need to, like, that blessing needs to be consistent against, uh, um, throughout my whole life, in my whole home life and you know everything that I do so this is where we need to examine our hearts because you ought to see one or the other okay one or the other being able to uh, being able to see it valuable okay it is an indicator that learning is taking place if you're recognizing you got to see yourself in the proverb you got to allow the word of God to kind of stir things up you know, to inconvenience you, to stir up your thinking, you know, you got to allow it to do that. Other words, other words, other words, you're just reading a book, you know, and so this is the living word. It, it has that power if you allow it to. This is where we get into how does God speak to us? <laughs> this is how, you know, um, I think it's Piper, uh, John Piper that says, you want to hear God speak audibly? Read the word of God out loud. That's God speaking out loud. Yeah. Okay. So the more we journey through this book, the more we begin to understand the wisdom of remaining quiet. I think chapter 11, I think the whole proverb, you know, talks about that, right? The importance of silence. The knowledge that words matter and we must use them wisely and we begin to see how much strength and self-control that really takes it's easy to spew out filth you know and emotions and opinions but it's very challenging and difficult to allow the Holy Spirit to control us and to shut your mouth not caring about our own will okay not caring about the need to be right but to be a blessing to be a blessing now that's hard <laughs> that's difficult but that's what this book keeps pointing at it keeps leading us to that just be still be quiet i'm doing something you know you don't have to put your two cents in. Sometimes the most spiritual thing that you can do is shut your mouth mm -hmm. in that moment, okay? All right. That was our <clears throat> cheese and crackers, which we have here tonight. That cheese was so good. Um, so now we're going to go into our meat and potatoes with Numbers chapter 24. 
So that is uh, the one proverb. Okay, so if if you can read one proverb and really just kind of sit with it and just kind of meditate on the Lord with that one proverb, it can take you places. You can do that every day. Okay, so chapter 24 took us for a loopy loop with verse 1 and 2 last week. So that was... That was fun. We just kind of stayed there and allowed God to just reveal himself through those two verses, meaning we only got to verse two. <laughs> okay? So we're going to do our lovely recap. Anybody want to jump in and, and recap verse one and verse two? What did we learn? That he was a uh, sorcerer. Uh-huh. Um, and that, um, well, we learned that God is faithful yes. for it to us. And that, um, you know, false and what's, how do you say it? False? Balaam. Balaam? Or yeah, Balaam. Balaam. Mm -hmm. Balaam. Uh, he was, he didn't, he wanted to do it his way. Uh -huh. And uh, the Lord, you know, he spoke to him. And he knew that that was the spirit of God because of uh -huh. how it happened and what he told him to say. Uh-huh. So um, that's where we're at, aren't we? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. What else did you get? Those two verses. There's quite a bit. There's ten pages of notes, so I know there's quite a bit. <laughs> what else? I, I, we, we came up with a quotable that we can put on a T-shirt. It says, "The God is faithful behind your back, yeah, behind our bags." I thought, wow, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So God is faithful behind our backs, you know? When other people are stabbing us in the back, God is faithful. He also said that God is working in our favor. Yes. Behind our backs. Yes. So even though we feel like there's nothing happening in our situation, God is working behind closed doors. Yeah. He's taking care of things. He's yeah. moving things around. He's strategically, you know, placing things for you. Um, and you have no idea. You don't even know. Okay? Um, so we know, we know that Balaam is there because King Balak has re requested him. He wants him to what? He's wanted him to do all this all along. Curse. Curse. Just curse him. So I can go in there and, you know... Wipe them out. <coughs> um, and, he, and he can't. He can't because, you know, he's been threatened by the Lord. So he won't. And he, like God spoon feeds stuff to him and he says it. But now we're seeing that all of a sudden we ended on that cliffhanger. Do you remember? That, what was he doing? He's looking at them. And, and he was captivated. He was kind of really looking at them as they camped out. And obviously we know what he's looking at because we've studied what he's looking at. He's, he's seeing them camped out in the shape of a cross. So he's seeing the cross, but he's seeing like 2,000 years late, you know, 2,000 years into the future. This, you know, Jesus is not coming for a long time. So he's perplexed. And we learned that that, Perplex that that confusion that thing that draws us to God causes us to ask questions and we saw that as he's looking at Israel he's looking how how did that name Israel come to be struggling with God oh yeah Jacob wrestled wrestled, wrestled with God and yeah. so the name Israel means to wrestle with God so there is a um, Balaam looking and I'm sure at his own kind of wrestling like who is this God? I've dealt with all kinds of gods. This God is different and all of a sudden the spirit of the Lord falls on him. Okay, that's where we stay. So we're going to read verse 3 to 4. Joanna, can you read that please? Yes. Chapter 24 in Numbers verse 3 to 4. And this is the message he delivered. 
This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I, I want to take into account a few things. So now, Balaam, a man who is clearly shook, okay? This is a word that I learned, okay? That apparently means beyond shocked, okay? <laughs> because he has seen something he cannot unsee, okay? And he doesn't quite understand it. He has had the experience this encounter and because he took a moment to really look okay and these two verses are a confirmation of everything we studied last week a man who got something that he could not comprehend didn't even know what he got you know he's like Son, i don't know what this is he's just really moved in this moment he doesn't know what's going on very much like someone who doesn't know Jesus experiencing the presence of God for the very first time. Coming face to face with the cross, but he has no frame of reference for it. Okay? So he is shook. He is perplexed. Here in verse 3, Balaam starts speaking by introducing himself. Okay? In verse 3, we see that. Okay? Okay? And on one hand, he describes himself as Balaam, the son of Beor. Okay, this is important because back then, you were um, as important as your family was. Like, who your father was actually meant something, you know? And so you would say, oh, she's the daughter of... You could list the grandpa and so on. And then, oh, okay, depending on, you know, how they feel about that, their reputation... The importance in the, oh, you, you were elevated. The, so he's saying the son of Beor. Beor was the same thing he did. He was a secular prophet. He, he uh, was a prophet for profit. He would just do um, whatever incantation, whatever, you know. He, he, he's operating just like his dad. So that means something. So he's saying his resume. He is saying his identity. He's saying what he is known for, okay, in that moment. But on the other hand, he describes himself, he goes on to say, as a man whose eyes are shut, and verse set, and verse 4 says, are now opened, okay? So he's describing himself in two parts, okay? Man and spirit, okay? So Balaam is saying he heard the words of God and saw through a vision the Almighty. This actually happened while his eyes were shut, while he was in a trance, the verse tells us, okay? So spiritually, so we're talking about spiritually, because if his eyes were shut, yet they were open, what does that mean? He spiritually saw something. He spiritually heard something. So this has been a constant desire of God for us from the very beginning, that we hear and that we see, okay? He's always trying to get our attention. Through the prophets, God reveals his thoughts regarding this. Let's go there. Let's go to the prophets. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5.21 And Miss Lisa, when you get there, can you please read that? We'll Jeremiah read chapter 5, verse 21. I'm just going to give you several examples. You know how important this is to God because it's repetitive throughout the Word of God. Go ahead. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Now go to Ezekiel 12, 2. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 2. And we there, Michelle, can you read that, please? Son of man, you are living among a rebellious house. 
They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Okay. Man, that God's speaking to some house right now. He's speaking to us right there. Moses tells us, Moses tells it, it, it is God who gives us the ability to hear and to see. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy. This is Moses. I, I can't wait till we get to Deuteronomy because Deuteronomy is like, Moses is on his deathbed and he's saying like the most important things he wants us to remember. And so it's a treasure cove of stuff. But let's go there now. Deuteronomy 29. Um, verse 4. <laughs> and Miss Honda, can you read that please when you get there? Deuteronomy 29, 4. But to this day the Lord has not given you a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. Okay. So he's he's saying God has, God is the one who does this, who allows you to hear, who allows you to see, okay? Then Jesus goes into it further. Let's go to Matthew, first book of the New Testament, Matthew 13. And we're going to read 10 through 13, Matthew 13, verse 10 through 13. And Miss Deborah, when you get there, could you please read that? <clears throat> And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. But whoever has to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. Okay. So this is wow. Jesus saying, you know, the, the disciples were asking Jesus, like, why, you know, why are you always talking to them, like, in these stories? Because he was a storyteller. That's what Jesus was saying. He would say stories that was relatable to them. So he would share these stories, and the disciples were like, why can't you... And he would always tell them, because you have the ability to understand things of the kingdom. To you it has been open, but they don't have the ears to hear. They don't have eyes to see. They don't understand. So you have to explain it to them differently is what he was saying. He was, I mean, you can learn a lot from Jesus, how he taught and how, um, how he demonstrated things. Let's go to Matthew 11. So the same book, Matthew 11. Verse 15. And that, yeah, Miss Lisa, can you read that? He who has ears, let him hear. Okay. So he would go about and he would always kind of say that. Like that was his tagline. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. So people are like, what do you mean? Everybody has ears. What do you mean? He, would, uh, he was speaking to their spirit. He was trying to get their spirit to listen. He, listen to what I'm telling you. So this is what's happening. So now, Numbers 24, we're back, we're back there. Um, so now here we are with Balaam, this evil man up to no good, who has been given the ability to hear and to see. Okay? Only God does that. Okay? And the interesting thing is that Balaam actually recognizes it. He acknowledges it. He's telling us in verse 3, verse 3 and 4, he's saying, this is, I'm Balaam, son of Beor, but I'm also a man whose ears have been opened, whose eyes have been opened. Something happened, okay? So, I'm wondering, as I think about this, as Balaam recognizes it and he acknowledges it, can you? Do you? Do you hear God through what his spirit is telling you? Do you see? And if you don't, are you brave enough to recognize it? I can't see. I can't hear. 
because our God is in the business of opening up deaf ears and blind eyes. You gotta ask him. All you have to do is ask him. Um, last year, we went to New Braunfels as a spring uh, weekend getaway, and there was an activity that I did that, man, I, I knew it was gonna be powerful. I didn't know just how powerful it was going to be with these women. So I had tied rope um, basically in a circle around, you know, I went to where it was very wooded and I tied uh, a rope around the trees, just in a circle, just in a circle. And then I went back to, the women didn't see me do this. I went back to the women and I had them all blindfolded. And then I had them carefully go, you know, we led them into the woods. We had them touch the rope and say, you're about to enter a labyrinth. Okay, oh, yeah. you have to be able to get out. When you think that you are done with this labyrinth, at any moment you can get out. You just let go of the rope, raise your hand, and we'll you know lead you away from it. So they were going and going in circles, in circles, in circles, in circles, over and over. Some of them are like, wait a minute. And I said, do not speak. And they started like realizing, oh my God. I'm going in circles. I'm done. I'm out. So then they would get out. They would remove the blindfold and quietly watch everyone, you know. And so this went on for about 20 minutes. Well, as someone got out and took off their blindfold, they started crying. They started watching them. They said, oh, my God, that's what I was doing. But I recognized it. I realized that I was going in circles. And I said, I want out. And this was affecting them deeply. They were crying, and then, and then finally, because these other ones were just, they were just like going round, 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 round. I said, okay, time's up. Take off the blindfold. And they're like giggling. Ah, oh, we were going in circles. Oh, I didn't even know. I was thinking about other things, and I just kept going. But isn't that how life is? Isn't that what happens? Your whole life for 10 years, I don't know, this, I guess I'm supposed to be in this job. I guess this is how life is supposed to be. I guess I'm supposed to, you know, fight all the time with my family. I guess I'm supposed to, you know, just this is it, you know, and just go in circles and circles and circles. El mismo circo, the same drama, the same song over and over, same dance over and over. And so many women are content with that. They're, they don't even recognize. Some of them didn't even recognize it. They're like, man, I was thinking about that. That's what happens. They were so distracted, so oblivious. And when the other women got out and they saw the other women, they weren't seeing the other women. They were seeing themselves in there. They realized, oh, my God, that was me. <coughs> and I didn't realize that I was going in circles. So it hit, like people started just weeping and it really affected people profoundly. And it hit me like this, I, you know, this is powerful because it's, you know, I, I think back on Helen Keller, I think back on the scriptures, but Helen Keller said this, I don't mind being blind as long as I have vision. I don't mind not being able to see as long as I have vision. And people go through their whole life being able to see no vision. They cannot see. And this just tugged at me. And I wanted to share that with you because it's, a, it's powerful. How do you see? How do you see? Do you realize that you are blind? Do you realize in certain areas, God needs to speak to me. God needs to give me light in this area. Because I may be going in circles. I think that I can see, but maybe I can't see. Maybe I need God to show me. I need God to open my ears and open my eyes. So how do we see? Now the question can be practical as much as it is spiritual. Like your spiritual longing of, I want to see. I want to see. I'm tired of this. You know, I know there's more. I want to see. So how do we see? Go to Psalms 119. So if you go smack to the middle of your Bible, there's Psalms. 
Psalms 119, verse 105. Goodness gracious, so many verses in this chapter. Okay. And we'll have Miss Letty, can you read that, please? So, Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Okay. So how do we see? We see with his word. His word is a light unto our feet. How do we hear? Let's go to Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. This is one that is quoted all the time and in and, and excitement. But I want you to see the depth of this verse. 10, 17. And when you're there, Miss Honda, can you please read that? Romans 10, 17. <clears throat> right after the book of Acts. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, okay? So I want you to, to get this, okay? Because we think, oh, if we say it enough, if we hear it enough, you know, um, well, what, then I, I'll have faith. If I say it enough, I've said enough. But what it, how are you hearing? It's telling you the other part that a lot of people skip over or they don't understand. The only way you can hear is by the word of God. Okay? So I want you to, to realize that. That the only way to truly hear is through the word of God. So the only way to see is with the word of God. The only way to hear is with the word of God. As we navigate through the word, who helps us? Because it's difficult, the Holy you know? Spirit. Yeah. Yay, good answer. Let's go to John 14, 26. John 14, 26. And when you're there, Joanna, can you read that, please? Because he didn't leave us without assistance. He has given us all the ability to, to go through this, to navigate. It might be rough terrain, you know? But we this is what we need. We need the word of God. So go ahead. Read that, please. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Okay. Yeah. Holy Spirit will teach you. Holy Spirit is a genius. He knows all things here and to come. He is he's a spirit of God and he's assigned to help you. So there are times that you won't understand or you get frustrated. So ask Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a preacher that he was talking about when when people are called and and it brought it brought this to memory because it says he will bring things to remembrance. Okay, I want you to understand when when we when we read the word of God like it's happening right there, but it's happening right here. Okay? It, it it's it's multidimensional the word of God is because God is not confined in time. So he's speaking to them, the disciples, but he's speaking to us in that very moment. What's interesting to note is that science tells us that sound never stops traveling. So when you say something, it goes on forever. The sound waves travel forever. They don't stop. 
So, uh, you know, it's good to know so that when God, when Jesus is saying, peace, be, be still to the storm, he's still speaking that. He's, so catch it, you know, and, and, and speak that to your own storm. But everything that Jesus is saying, and he threw it out there into the earthly realm, sound waves go on forever. And so here we see that he is saying, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, was your you know, will send um, by my name, and he will teach you all things. But this interesting part of it, it says, it says, and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So I know he's talking to the disciples, but he's also talking to me. He's also talking to you. So I'm going, well, what? I don't understand. Bring things to remembrance that you said to me. And so... This preacher kind of uh, allowed me to to comprehend that in a deeper way, because he's he says you, you've got to remember you know that you were formed and God knew you before you know He formed you in your mother's womb. Okay, so even before that, because he says he before He formed you in your mother's womb. So before you even were there to form, He knew you. Okay, we talked about that. He He knew your name. Okay, so God was with us before he sent us. We had to have been, you know, we were sent, okay? So there's this whole thing, this experience, this love of the Father that's in us that we don't even remember. So he brought up this movie, and some of you have seen it. I don't, I don't remember the title of it, but it was when this couple, they were so in love. They're so, in, you know, it's back when you don't have children, so you're really in love. You spend a lot of time together. So they were really in love. Well, they, have, they go through a car accident, and he, she forgets. She forgets who he is. So she's like, get away from me. Don't touch me. I don't know who you are. And so he is wooing her. He wants to, you know, show her that he loves her. He doesn't care. If all that is forgotten, that's okay. I love you. I'm going to I'm going to find my way to you. You know, I'm going to get you back and and so he's softly and gently wooing her until one day, oh my gosh, it hits her. And she's like, "Oh my gosh, I remember." She remembers little things and it rem you know, it reminds her. So, when God, when you're going through life and you're in your sin and you're in your own life and you're doing your own thing, and then at a certain moment, God will throw little, you know, glimpses of who he is. And he'll say, Lisa, remember me? And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm called. <laughs> yeah, he's calling you. He's calling you. He's the greatest love story you'll ever have. A lot of things, and, and um, some great teachers said this, that the teachers are not... Um, they're not teaching you anything. You already you already know everything. You already know. They're just causing you to remember. And so here I'm reading this and I'm going, oh my gosh, this is all tied together. You, the, the lover of my soul, <clears throat> who have always known me and you, you are causing me to remember who you were to me, how, you know, and that I belong to you and that you are my beloved and I am your beloved. And so that's Jesus. He's just wooing you back. He has, You've always been his. You've always been chosen and called. He's causing you and he's doing things in your life so that you remember him. Okay? So that's why Holy Spirit will teach you things and he will cause things to come to remembrance. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, and Isn't you know, beautiful? Jeremiah, I like the, the yeah. Jeremiah 33, 3. Uh-huh. It says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable unsearchable things you do not know. So mm -hmm. he opens up. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a whole, you know, that's the whole seek him and all of that because he wants to be known, but he desires for you to come and, pers and, and be after, you know, seek. Um, and you shall find. Okay, so I wanted you to get that. And we're now we're back at Numbers 24. And I hope, my like, God, please turn my water into wine. I, I, because part of me, like, I comprehend it in my head. 
And then I want to be able to, you know, to share that with you in a way that you comprehend as well, that I'm doing a good job um, at helping you understand, you know, as, as I'm understanding. And anyway, back to Numbers 24. God allowed Balaam to hear and to see. Verse 3. Verse 3 had told us the Spirit of God came upon him and he was able to recognize it and it was different. So now God speaks through Balaam. Okay, we're going to hear this in verse 5 through 9. Joanna, can you read that? 24 verse four, 5 through 9. So the whole, this first oracle, this first prophecy. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. How lovely are your homes, O Israel. They spread before me like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offsprings have all they need. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces shooting them with arrows like a lion israel crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to arouse her blessed is everyone who blesses you O israel and cursed is everyone who curses you okay so this is what balaam speaks out for the first time it doesn't say god put it in his mouth it says the spirit of god came upon him and he spoke this so let's unpack this okay this is what god is saying to Balaam regarding his children, regarding the Israelites, okay? So let's break it down, okay? Because there's a lot here, and I don't want you, it's beautiful language, and I don't want you to get confused by it, but basically he sees the beauty of the Lord, okay? He looks at their campsite, and God allows them to see the beauty of the Lord. Balaam acknowledges, when we get to those verses, when he's talking about the trees and and uh, he, Balaam acknowledges that there's a creator. Verse 6, okay, when he's talking about nature, and he says, planted by the Lord. He's acknowledging that there's a creator God who planted these trees. He sees the Israelites as having plenty and overflow when he's talking about the buckets, okay, that are, that are filled. And that they will have a great king, okay? Back in uh, verse 7, he's talking about King Agag. Okay, well, King Agag is the king of the Amalekites, I believe. And so he's saying You're, they're going to have a greater king than King Agag. Well, he's mentioning this other evil king because this is the most powerful king that they know. That's their frame of reference. So then he says it was God who brought them here. Okay, so God, you know. He, he's telling these, all these like evil men are surrounding him. And he's like saying this to them. It's God who brought them here. God has set them free from Egypt. What they know to be a very powerful people. They knew the Egyptians. Oh, wow. You know, that God freed them from that. You know, so he's saying all these things. God goes before them and he fights for them. Okay. This is what he's saying here. He's as strong as Wait for it. Wait for it. Some translations read an ox. Some of you have mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But some of you, if you have the King James, the Geneva and the King James, what do they say? Who has a King James here? Okay. The King James and the Geneva say unicorn. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? What the what? Yes. Unicorns are throughout the Old Testament. Okay, I want you to know that they existed and to only think of them as fantasy or mythical creatures is wrong. I'm sure they didn't look like the way they are today. Okay, the way they are in like a Disney movies and, and with the glitter and the pink. Okay, so that's not it. Not like your daughter's toy. But, but they were real. And I want you to, when we leave here, you know, check this out for yourself. I'm going to give you verses where you, you're going to see that again. But make sure you look it up in the King James translation or the Geneva. Job 39, 9 through 12. Okay? When he's talking to Job. 
39, 9 through 12. Psalms 29, 6. So your kids are going to love this. Like, oh my gosh, the unicorn. Psalms, Psalms 29, 6. Isaiah 34, 7. Okay? You got to check this out again in the King James translation. So there was unicorns? So just like many animals, yeah, so just like many animals, they, they're extinct, okay? Like the dodo bird, there's, you know, dinosaurs. We don't say, oh, that never happened. They're just extinct. Now there's stories. That story had to come from somewhere. And then, of course, there's the, you know, embellishing and traumatic, you know, stuff around it. But I always felt the unicorn was my spirit animal. Not that that's a thing. That's just a thing. Okay. <laughs> Caleb. So he goes on. So those are the verses you can check out. And, and if you have kids or grandkids, they're going to love that. So Balaam says God is their defender and he fights for them. He compares Israel to a lion. A lion is the king of the jungle who is all powerful and just sits and waits, right? Without a care in the world. But he also compares them to a lioness who, you know, who are the ones who go after the prey and others, you know, do not disturb the, do not disturb the lioness or you, they'll come after you. This is what he's seeing as he looks at the Israel camp, as Israel's camping there. They're, they're unbeknownst to them all that is going on. You know, the Israelites are unbeknownst. Um, and at the end of verse 9, Balaam discredits himself. This is the most interesting thing of all. That's how you know it's God speaking through, the, through him. Because he discredits himself and turns it all around in favor of the Israelites. He says, blessed is everyone who blesses them and cursed is anyone who curses them. Okay, that's the NLT translation, the simple translation. So you see, prior to this, everyone thought that Balaam was the go-to guy. He was the one that was to be hired for this because King Balak, the king of the Moabites, said this about him. Go back. So we're just going to rewind a little bit to Numbers 22, verse 6. <clears throat> Uh, go ahead, Michelle, when you're there. Can you read it? Numbers 22, verse 6. Please come out. Put a Please come and put a curse on these people for me because they are more powerful than I am. I may be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land, for I know that those you, are, that those you bless are blessed and those you curse are cursed. So the whole reason he called Balaam is because he said, I know that you can come out here and whatever you bless will be blessed and whatever you curse will be cursed. And Balaam is saying this about the Israelites. Whoever blesses them is blessed. Whoever curses them is cursed. So this is such a powerful <clears throat> moment. It is one thing if a prophet of God were to be saying it, okay? This thing about Israel, discrediting um, and discrediting this evil secular person, you know, but God chooses to use the very man these evil people sought out because they saw him as powerful to speak <clears throat> these words about Israel and discredit himself at the same time boasting about the Israelites. Isn't that just like our God? Who can know his ways? Who can know his thoughts? God will protect us. God will defend us. God <clears throat> will provide for us. God will work on our behalf, but not the way you think, not the way you've planned, not mm -hmm. the way you thought, not even <clears throat> the way he's done it before. His way is best. His way is best. His way is perfect. Let's pray. Let's end here and pray. And after we pray, we're going to kind of share a little bit with God, what Holy Spirit is stirring up in our hearts. But let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you because your ways are so much higher than our ways. Your thoughts are so much better than our 
thoughts, God. Thank God that we trust in you, that we are completely in your hands. And God, I pray for anyone, God, for anyone that at this moment desires to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name, in the spirit, God, that these eyes be open and these ears be open, that they will see that they need a Savior. <clears throat> that, Father God, their only way is to surrender completely to you. I pray, Father God, for anyone within the sound of my voice, that they will be wooed and that they will be stirred to give their life to you, God, to surrender, to look at the cross and lay it all down. Father God, I pray that for us even now, Father God, as you continue to reveal and highlight things in your word, Father God, that you continue to shift our minds, that you continue to wow us, God, that you continue to, to leave us shook, God, and perplexed, God, because to know you is, is just an incredible task. And God, if we could explain you, <clears throat> then you wouldn't be God. So, Father God, we just want to know you a little more, a little more. Speak to us and continue to stir us up. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Trinity, take us off our eyes.